इंस्टॉलेशन एंड कमिशनिंग लो टू मीडियम के लिए कैनोपी जेनसेट्स Proper installation and commissioning of a genset is very important to achieve better uptime and safety. This video acts as a guide to a typical genset installation. Please note there may be some variables in actual condition. Government of India regulations have made it mandatory for genset manufacturing plants to ensure a proper enclosure called canopy for all gensets manufactured in their plants. Each genset should be CPCP compliant. Canopy gensets can be placed in open air. Foundation Before the arrival of the DG set, ensure a cement concrete foundation block of adequate size is made ready for placing the genset. Length and breadth minimum 12 inches more than the DG set. Depth of the concrete block should be 600 mm and if the soil is loose, the depth may have to be increased. Concrete block should be 10 cm above the ground to maintain cleanliness. Surface of concrete block should be in one water level. Use spirit level to measure the flatness of the concrete block surface. Note The pressure applied by the dead weight of the genset must be lower than the load bearing capacity of the foundation. A bad foundation will lead to excessive vibration resulting in various failures in the genset. The generating set should be connected to earth in accordance with local regulations. Four number of earth pits are required as per the Indian electricity rules. The neutral earth pits and body earth pits should be located on opposite sides of the canopy. Two earthing pits for body earthing, one from the alternator body and the other from the canopy. Two separate earthing pits for the neutral. Connect the two neutral plates to form a neutral earth grid. Similarly, connect the body earth plates to form a body earth grid. Note that the body and neutral earth should never be interconnected. Chemical earthing Chemical earthing is strongly recommended in those locations where water level is low. Soil resistivity is high, mostly in hilly terrains. It is better than conventional salt charcoal earthing in many ways. It is maintenance free. No need to pour water regularly as in the charcoal and salt method. It has a very long life. Drill a bore of 200 to 300 mm diameter and 2 to 3 m depth. Insert the earthing electrode at the center of the bore. Mix the chemical compound nicely with water to make a thick slurry. Pour it around the slides of the electrode gradually to reach up to the ground level. First check of earth resistance value will be carried out on the day of the installation. Final results are taken 7 days after installation. The earthing electrode can now be connected after the preliminary check. Unloading to lift the genset, use the hook provided on the canopy.
should not be more than 7 degrees. The gases must never enter back into the genset or enter into windows, doors or any such other areas. Improper ventilation will result in overheating of the genset, affecting its performance that may lead to higher fuel consumption. Take care to see that genset should be located away from polluted atmosphere. For humid or coastal atmospheric applications, anti-condensation heaters are recommended for alternator. General checks. Visually check the canopy for any damages and check the door locks. Visually check the base frame. Fix all parts which comes loose along with the genset. Align and fasten the exhaust bellows if required. Check the tightness of the avium pad bolts, base frame bolts and radiator mounting bolts. Exhaust piping. Ensure that exhaust gas goes out to the atmosphere without obstruction. Exhaust piping run to rooftop should be through sound attenuated ducting. If additional exhaust piping is required, the exhaust pipe length should be as short as possible. Keep the number of bends minimum to ensure minimum back pressure. Excessive back pressure will result in poor engine performance. Always use smooth bends. Have a look at the table of bends. After noting down the number of bends and type of bends involved, calculate the total equivalent length. Earthing Copper or GI strip of suitable size should be used for earthing. Now test the earthing condition. To measure the earthing condition use only an earth tester. Using the earth tester. In this method two separate spikes are driven in the earth. Spike length into the earth should not be more than 1 20th of the distance between two spikes. These two spikes are kept in the same line due to which there will not be mutual interference in the field of individual spikes. Pour water for good conductivity. Now earth tester terminals C1 and P1 are shorted to each other and connected to earth electrode under test. Terminals P2 and C2 are connected to two separate spikes driven in the earth. If we rotate the generator handle with specific speed, we get directly earth resistance on scale. Please note, Earthing condition test should be done only with earth tester. If you use a multimeter, it will create continuity and not the actual health of the earth pit. Ensure that continuity and resistance tests of the earth pits are conducted at least once in a year. Cabling Check the alternator visually. Check AVR connections. Care to be taken that weights of cables should not fall on the alternator. Crimped cables should be connected to alternator and control panel through cable glands. Check all cables and thimbles. Remember, overheating due to loose thumbing, undersized cables causes most of electrical failures. For proper terminal connection, the contact area must be adequate. Improper termination will lead to local heat generation which may lead to failure. Following situations should be avoided. Point contact arising out of improper positioning. Gaps between links and terminals. In such cases, 
the nut or bolt will carry the load current. Normally, these are usually of mild steel and hence are not designed to carry such high currents. Check all internal panel and other electrical connections for looseness, tighten if required. Battery check. Clean, tighten and apply petroleum gel. Ensure that the battery is fully charged. Make sure that the polarity of the battery connections are correct before applying power to all electronic controls. Power cabling between alternator and control panel and control panel and changeover switch. Two mains should be done with correct size of cables and thimbles. It is very important to select the correct size of load cables. Refer the chart. Check working of all meters, lamps and indicators. Note down the performance parameters. RPM, frequency, voltage. Check the oil pressure and water temperature. Check for any abnormal noise or vibration. Use a sound level meter commonly known as dB meter to measure the sound level. Note, in open air canopy type gensets, you have to measure noise level as per the Ministry of Environment and Forests. DG sound level at 1 meter distance from canopy should not be more than 75 dB. Stop the engine and check the working of the stop solenoid. It should hold for 15 seconds. Applying load on the DG. Never start the genset with 100% load. It is advisable to apply load in steps. Check proper distribution of load on all the phases. Note down all the parameters. Now if the genset has been provided with an AMF panel, set the DG in auto mode. And check the performance parameters. Also check the working of all alarms LLOP, HWT, LFL and RWL. Check the auto mains failure operation. Now run the engine for at least one hour. Check all parameters once again. Ensure the proper working of the DG. To shut down the genset, turn off the load. Allow the DG set to run on no load for a few minutes. Then shut down. 